going on you guys as you can see from behind us we have a lot of stuff in the car we are on a mission today to go restock our antique booth we have kind of hinted at it and shown you guys a couple little clips here and there on our youtube channel but we've never given you the full tour and like talked about where it is how much we're paying what we're actually selling so far so today we're going to take all this stuff restock things that have sold uh and give you guys a little full down low is that, is that the full down low yes. on our antique booth which isn't an antique booth at all it's not antiques it's more of a thrift booth but yes. nonetheless it's pretty cool this is gonna be kind of vlog style video today we don't really know what we're headed into we <laughs> yeah. might head to the bins we might go other places but we'll just take you along also as we were leaving the house today the fedex driver came up and he dropped off my sealed and graded forrest gump vhs tapes that i've been waiting on for a couple months so let's jump into some of that footage to show you guys what those came back as i think we finally have access in here maybe so close let's see an eight I don't know if that's good or bad. I think Beckett has like very high standards for what they for what they grade. But isn't it so cool that they put it in this cool acrylic case? Aren't those included in, in Yeah. That? Well and that's really why you pay so much money for it, because it comes in this cool case. Yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. All right, 8.0 EX plus seal A minus. So now we have to open the other one to see if that one's better. Fancy case. Ooh, I wonder if that means it's better. I don't know. The case is cool because you could take it with you wherever you go. This one, 8.5, a little bit better. And this is the Blockbuster version. This is the one that was available at Blockbuster. So I'll probably keep this one, the 8.5 from our personal collection and sell the other one. In terms of value, I have no idea what it's worth. Like an ungraded sealed copy of Forrest Gump is not worth really anything, like five bucks. But now that it's graded, who knows? There are three graded copies of Forrest Gump on VHS tape currently for sale on eBay right now, $1,900, $1,500, and $300. So obviously the listing prices are all over the place. And the only one that's actually sold, sold on auction for $9.99. To be honest with you guys, it cost like $60 to $80 just to get the item graded. So this guy who sold his for 10 bucks lost a ton of money. So I would never recommend auctioning something like this, but I also would not recommend listing it for $1,900 because it's just not a rare VHS tape. It's pretty easy to get it graded. Generally, it's probably going to be worth the loose price plus what it costs to get graded. So it's worth about $10 loose. It costs about $80 to get graded. So I think I can get about $90 to $100 for it. One thing we've been wanting for our booth is like a guest sign-in book. So if people from our YouTube channel want to come check out stuff, they can sign in and you know tell us Leave where books. they're from. Yeah. yeah. But the problem is we're looking on Amazon and all we see are like wedding register, wedding yeah. guest books or like books for Airbnbs where it's like a whole page like I'm from this and we did this and all this stuff and we just want like a blank notebook. So we're coming to stop at TJ Maxx real fast, see if they have something we could make work. Yeah. So this is the journal little notebook section at TJ Maxx and there's a lot to choose from but none of them are really guest books. It's just like little journals you could write in. This one's kind of cool, cool and dark sign moon. The best one I found so far is this one. It's big. It's bigger than most of them and it's just got lines in there there's like dates at the top i guess you could like circle them like circle the month and circle the day so people know when you visited but i don't know it's not ideal but i feel like it's the best option with what we got right now so i think i'm gonna go with this seven bucks we got the book that i showed you guys in there i think that's gonna work and then i also i was like oh we need pins you know for people to sign with said so this packet of like multicolored gel pins yeah i was like okay fun. well if we get all these these were ten dollars by the way but if we get all this we'll need something to put them in so I got this cute little glass Very container. Cute. You guys, if you do come to our booth, please don't steal the pens. Please, the pens are not for <laughs> sale. Even though our car is at max capacity right now, Haley wanted to stop at this Goodwill to see if there's anything else we could grab, especially small items to put in our booth. We're adding another wall shelf today and another like clothing rack unit. So we just need stuff to, to fill the space that we're gonna also, have after today. We just today. have a thrifting addiction and gotta stop by a Goodwill. Yeah, this one actually has the new boutique too, which just has the up, the more expensive more expensive stuff it, so we'll but sometimes it's still priced you know relatively reasonably I got two pairs of shoes over here that i think we will grab yeah, this pair of puma ignite golf shoes i think these are men's 11. they're only six dollars and fifty cents probably worth grabbing there and i got this pair of columbia pfg like boat shoes i normally wouldn't buy something like this but they're only six dollars and fifty cents and i think these would actually do pretty well in our booth if i can get you know 15 or 18 dollars for them in my booth, what size are they? Men's 11, so pretty good size. I'll grab both of those. Also got this pair of kids Nike Vapor Max. 
actually look to be in really good condition. Kid shoes are only $4.50. Probably gonna grab those. Glassware and mugs are something we hardly ever, ever take a look at because we just don't want to ship them. But now that we have the booth, we're actually looking at stuff like this. These are $3 a piece, which I think is kind of expensive, but it is like eye-catching. If they were like a dollar a piece, I'd probably take a chance on them. I have this little leather, it's like a, I don't know, leather cup holder. I need a huge margarita. That's five dollars though, and Haley found this Starbucks mug over here for a second. I would pay a dollar for that, but they want six dollars for it. A little rough. I'll get a little Disney mug back here. This one's five dollars. It's just, it's a little crazy, a little crazy. I think I will get this though. It's one of those swig double walled tumblers, brand new. Keeps stuff cold for nine hours, hot for three hours. And this one's only two dollars. So I think that would be worth it. So we spent twenty dollars even on all that stuff. I rounded up. Uh, the total, but I think it'd be pretty good. I think the Puma golf shoes should sell for like maybe $25. So after fees, we'd make all of our money back. Those kids' Nike Vapor shoes should do pretty well. Yeah. I haven't sold a pair of Nike Vapors in a while, but those are usually at least $30, $35 or so. Then again, the Columbia shoes and the Swig wine tumbler thing. We'll yeah, just go so to our you booth. got all of our finds today. I didn't find a single thing. We did go into the boutique side, and unfortunately, it's just not, there wasn't anything there. The, the stuff we were interested in was too expensive, and the other stuff just wasn't really good brands. We decided to stop at one more Goodwill before we go to the antique booth. And of course, it's our Ben's Goodwill outlet location, where you pay by the pound. It's also, also half off day. They've been open for oh, like yeah, an hour and hot. a half. So we may not find anything, but hey, we're here anyways. Everything's gonna be very picked through, but since the antique booth that we have is literally like five minutes down the road, it's very easy for us to buy like big stuff here that people don't wanna deal with shipping and just take it to the antique booth. So I just found this fur coat. It's got pockets, it full zips. There's a hood on it. It's definitely vintage. The brand is Beekman Place. And the only tag I see on it is this tag that has like a, it says clean by fur coat method. So I don't know what type of fur it is, but looks to be in good shape and it's only going to cost like i don't know maybe two or three dollars here so i figured we could throw it in the booth for i don't know 30 30 bucks or 40 bucks i don't know maybe i'm severely under or overpricing that never sold fur coats before because i usually don't want to deal with like any restrictions or whatever that ebay has but our antique booth don't have any restrictions i also found this little h m tote bag i don't think it's leather but you know i might grab that and this little superman baseball style hat we already talked about this. I just found these two things. This is little countertop, I think the coffee mug holder. That should be perfect for our booth. We can use it to display coffee mugs and sell it. And then I found this little mid-century modern table. I would never buy this to ship it, but just these legs, they look to be like solid mid-century, like maybe walnut or something. The legs alone on eBay would probably be worth like 40 to 50 bucks. So we're gonna buy the whole table for probably $5. It really just depends on what they say. And then maybe put like $50 on it in our booth, which I think is super fair. Very good deals in there today since it was half off day. I think they normally charge $5 for small pieces of furniture like this, but today it was only $2.50. So we paid a total of $8.20 for, for everything. <laughs> That's awesome. I think we're gonna put this table in our booth as is for like probably 50 bucks. I mean, it's in a little rough condition, but in better condition, it would probably worth like 150. So I think that's a fair price. So we just pulled out of the Goodwill bins and now we're about to pull in to our antique mall. That's our favorite thing about this location is that it's literally 20 seconds away from the bins. And we passed by it on the way home anyway, so it's not out of the way at all. All we have to do is go in there, drop this stuff off, you know, organize it, make it look nice and get prices on it. So it'll probably take us 30, 45 minutes to process this load. But once it's in there, it's out of our lives. Like it just right. sells or doesn't. And we don't have to worry about shipping. We don't have to worry about meeting people up like Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. It's it's awesome. If you guys are OG Harry Tornado fans, you may recognize this building. It actually used to be the old Dream Deals, the Amazon Overstock store that Haley and I would come to all the time. That closed down and then it turned into Overstock Liquidation. And then now that has transitioned into Overstock marketplace which is the name of the antique mall Haley should be right behind me I just dropped off this little load right here but this is what the booth is looking like it's still a work in progress so I know we have a lot of wasted space like our area is within the blue tapes so we have basically two eight by eight booths so this is 16 feet by eight uh, and we are still working on you know making it look right nice we have this shelf over here which is actually four-sided so we have stuff on all sides which is a nice use of use of space we have these two corner shelves which i actually picked up on facebook marketplace the other day the guy was asking 25 dollars, and it was like 30 minute drive so I, once, once i got out there he was like i just wanted somebody to come get them at a fair price and he actually gave them to me for free just because he was thankful that i actually showed up to pick them up but that's how it's looking we have another shelf we're going to add over here to make this space look a little more closed off from the aisle over there 
and work on making things look a little bit better. Somebody has made a big mess with all of our bumper stickers. These were supposed to be in this bowl, but that's fine. So you guys know I bought this gumball machine. I'm very, very excited, but I just spent $230 on it and Haley does not think we'll ever make uh, our money back or okay, any Okay, 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 no. I said, <laughs> Let's see. I didn't think, I didn't say we were not gonna make our money back. I just said it was gonna take so long it is gonna take a while. to make our money back. This I just is, had to preface that. This is the first day. This has been here about a week and it doesn't look like we sold a ton of gumballs, but I'm about to open up the coin or receptacle to see how much we Watch have. there be one quarter in there from the one <laughs> gumball you bought. I did, I did buy a gumball, so. So whatever it is is minus one minus quarter. One. Oh, wow, <gasps> look at that. Wow! We've sold four, seven gumballs. Oh my goodness, That's that was good. way more than I thought yeah. there was going to be. Also, we have two other canisters in the thing, so I got this. Where's They're that? right there in the back. Oh. I bought these on Timu. I know some people don't like Timu, but I really like Timu. And it is like a bunch of little miniature toys and these little balls. Like this is a little, I think they're like pencil toppers or something. It's just it's cute because you never know which one you'll get. Strawberry shortcake guy. So we're gonna load those up. There's actually a Pokeball in here somewhere. I don't know where it is, but you know, all sorts of little, there's a little broccoli, that's cute. 25 cents, and we got, I think there's a hundred of them, and I think I paid like, I don't know, like eight, $8, $7? So I don't know, it's not like hugely profitable, but it's interesting. It's just fun. Look at this, look at this. Someone gave us a Queen Elizabeth. What is this, a Canadian quarter? This is worth, they stole a gumball from us. What is a Canadian quarter worth? I'm upset. They're not really keys. They just like, you just unscrew these things and pull them out. And they just stay like that. And then you can take the top off. Are you gonna put them in one at a time? Well, I'm just making sure they're all closed. I don't want them to like bust open in there. There's one that opened right there. I don't even know where that guy is. Probably because you got them from Timu. Probably. Oh look, here's the Pokeball. It's my favorite. I figured I'd share with you guys the quick story about how this all came to fruition. So like I said, this used to be Dream Deals, the Amazon Ben's return store that we've made dozens of videos at. And I think they had like a five year lease on this building and like two years, maybe even a year and a half into the business, I guess they just stopped being profitable. They closed on Facebook and said they were closing for brief renovations and then they just literally never came back. So my friend Steven took over the remaining lease that they had and changed the name from Dream Deals to Overstock liquidation half of the store is like a liquidation store like big furniture pieces and stuff like that they sell half price and then this half of the store used to be an amazon return store they have the bins you dig in you pay a certain price every day blah 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 we all get it and i guess at some point the amazon bin store stopped being super profitable so they were exploring other options to use this space for outside of the amazon bin store model and we actually have three antique malls in this area within maybe five miles of this building, but they're all booked. They're all book solid. They have like a year and a half to two year waiting list for new vendors. So obviously there's like a nice organic demand for booth retail space in our area. So I was talking to Steven maybe like a year and a half ago and just mentioned it. And then finally he was like, hey, I think it's time we're gonna close the Amazon bin side of the store and open an antique mall. Are you still interested in having a booth? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Like I would love the ability to have like a retail-esque space without the overhead and responsibilities that comes with actually owning the building or owning the lease myself. So this was perfect for us. They have like 40 of these eight by eight booths. We have two eight by eight booths. So our space is 16 by eight uh, and they have a bunch of shelving units as well. We'll talk about the prices for everything later on, but Haley and I are really loving this. It's not a huge money maker, but we have sold like 35 things in the first two weeks, which is awesome because we don't have to ship anything. We don't have to deal with customer service. We don't have to do anything it just we put it here and price it and make it look cool and then people buy it so it's been awesome so far we're really liking it and roughly 45 minutes later everything is uh, priced and stocked again it's not perfect no it's like not. i don't know if it'll ever be you know perfect but i do like this table i kind of want to keep it like just right there to give a little bit of i don't know it just looks good in the booth but got everything stocked we still have plenty of other space to add more stuff we're not really using the most of our real estate here but for now i think it's looking pretty good yeah i do want to point out the show that josh got with that was really good so it yeah. has like this little area for like a couple of pieces of clothes and then a couple little shelves here and there yep. which is perfect to kind of like give a little wall to the booth mm -hmm. and 
That's exactly, I was on Amazon. And I think this was like $60 or something on Amazon. And I was like, oh, that's perfect. Cause we don't need a huge clothing rack. We had like one of the thick metal ones that we have in the warehouse. But when we brought it here, it just took up way too much space. I was like, all right, we'll just look for something a little bit smaller and has the option to put our shoes on as well. We stocked the gumball with the toys and the gumballs. Yes. Put we some also signs have up. The guest book yes. ready to go. So we have the pins, the guest book. So you guys, if you come by and look at our booth, please sign this. You don't we want to know who came and you yeah. know, supported us. Like I said, at TJ Maxx, there are like little dates, but I wouldn't worry about the date. Just write whatever you want in there. Yeah. Just don't take the book and don't steal, don't steal the pins. <laughs> It was looking pretty good. Yeah. I found this, I don't know if it was in a video or not, but I found this at the bins the other day, this little like fake can of unicorn meat. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll put it in the booth. Will it sell for $6? I don't know. We'll just put it up here on the shelf and see what happens. We also had the coffee mug holder. I put not for sale on it because I think we just want to keep it in the booth just to like put coffee mugs on because that's like perfect. We, I mean, we still have room for one, two, three, four, five, six more mugs. And like for the amount of real estate that that takes up with the amount of coffee butt mugs mm -hmm. we can put on there, I think that's worth worth keeping. This is, um, we actually filmed this in a video you guys haven't seen yet, but this little tiki mug, put $10 on it, but it's handmade in Alaska from 1975. So pretty cool. So again, this place is called Overstock Marketplace. It's in West Columbia, South Carolina. I don't know the exact address offhand, but I'll put that on the screen here. If you guys ever want to show up, they are closed Sundays and Mondays, uh, but Tuesday through Saturday, I think their hours are like nine to eight or something like that i'll put that on the screen here as well but our vendors here sell a little bit of everything i mean we got this over here i think this is one of our instagram friends that has uh this two booth section right here with like die cast cars and stuff he's not done stocking yet he's got a lot more to add but that's really fun got some jewelry and stuff over here this booth on the end is just like i don't know hard like tools and hardware and stuff got some furniture i mean a little bit of everything more furniture a lot of handmade stuff like perfect for christmas Absolutely. Christmas gifts. The booths are all eight by eight, and you can't. You could get more if you wanted. I think only us and the Instagram friend over there have more than one booth. But there oh, are the, all these end caps. Oh yeah, the end, end. Okay, yeah. So this this right here is an end cap. So this is a double booth, and yeah. that one on the front is a double booth. But each eight by eight section is a hundred dollars a month, uh, and then the mall itself takes ten percent of all sales, which is very. If you've never done antique booths before, that's a very fair price. They'll probably go up in the future. Um, but as of right now, 100 bucks a month plus 10% of sales, not too bad. I don't know if this is one booth and then this is another booth, but it's very cohesive. Like it doesn't seem like it's disconnected really, but either way, it's very, very cute. Steven also has these shelves available for rent. So each little rectangular shelf space is $25 a month and they have shelves all the way down there, all the way down to the other side by our booth. This lady right here makes these like freeze dried candies. She's very popular. We've bought like three of these Skittles from her. These shelves even weren't even here last time. Yeah, I think he's, he's added, added more. Yeah. Just yeah. Pay $25 or whatever. Yeah. $25 a month is a little bit more doable than a hundred a month. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's not much space, but I mean, it's really nice from the mall perspective because you gotta think every vertical column of shelves is a hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So just this section right here is 400 bucks a month in rent plus 10% of all sales. It's really fun. I, like I said, multiple times, I don't think this is gonna be a huge money maker for us. I mean, most of the stuff in our booth is like less than $20 before the 10% fee, but it's really nice to just like put stuff out and make it look cool and then just get notifications you know, every couple days when something sells. I was talking to somebody the other day that they said they have an antique booth and they basically use it in lieu of a storage unit. Like, cause a storage unit, an eight by eight storage unit would probably be about the same cost, like 100, 150, $200 a month. So they just put their stuff in the antique booth and then it just stores there and something sells great. If not, it's still cheaper than a storage unit. So it's very interesting. And half the building here is still a liquidation center. Like the antique mall starts here and goes this way and then everything from here over is all liquidation and i think they may be looking at like expanding a little bit this way or maybe even closing this down completely and just turning the whole thing into an antique ball which i think would be a good move so we're excited to see what the future is so we're home now i've got like an hour and 45 minutes maybe two hours before we have to leave for church tonight so i think i'm gonna do a quick whatnot pop-up show these are unplanned i just kind of go live and whatnot without any even anything in the store uh, just kind of pile up a bunch of stuff from around the warehouse that's been sitting here for too long and start everything at a dollar and sell some stuff for really, really cheap. Usually I got this pair of Doc Martens. They're like men's 16 or something like that. I'm sure those will go for like $10. So people usually get really good deals in these whatnot, like afternoon pop-up shows. So pretty exciting. We move stuff out, which is the whole purpose of it, and they get good deals. 
win-win. So it just wrapped up this whatnot auction. It went over really well. I think everybody had a good time. We had two to 250 people hanging out the, the whole show. So that was really nice. Lucky Brand Shoes sell for $6. A little Kermit Hockey Plush sold for $19. Uh, Nemo plush sold for six bucks. It was three dollars on this some roots jacket. I don't even know what that was. It had a custom embroidery on it, which hurt the value a little bit. Some Saucony shoes sold for seventeen. So like those Saucony shoes are probably worth like thirty bucks. I mean they're they're really nice condition. They're like trail running shoes. These Saucony Exodus, um, you know, great condition. Probably twenty five to thirty bucks on eBay. So obviously they didn't sell for quite as much as we could get on eBay. But then like the Kermit plush sold for a little bit like more than we could get on eBay by about the same amount. So everything usually balances out. Clothes and shoes have always been kind of tough for us to move and whatnot because you have to have like somebody that needs that exact size. But then the plushes and little random items make up for the lower sales on those. So we sold 41 items for a total gross sales amount of $602. That is before fees. Whatnot fees are about 11% or so. So we'll probably walk away with like $550 or so. I don't know exactly how much we had in the cost of goods of all this stuff, but nothing was very expensive. I mean, a lot of plush from the bins. Uh, I think somebody actually sent us these like Muppet hockey plushes to sell. I don't think we have anything in those. Uh, a lot of the clothing was stuff we picked up at the bins. This little Hello Kitty backpack, we got that at the bins, so probably paid 25 cents for it, and that sold for like $26. Um, but yeah, so probably a profit of around four hundred dollars four to four hundred fifty dollars i think roughly the doc martin boots i showed you those actually sold for seventeen dollars so a little bit more than i thought but still a really really good deal for whoever bought them i pulled out this carolina gamecocks football jersey to sell and whatnot it's not it doesn't have a name on it, it just says number 12 carolina on the front and then it's blank on the back other than the number but i asked people and whatnot i was like hey we normally don't do well with like collegiate items because if somebody is not a fan of that college why would they want a jersey you know so i'm like if somebody's here that is a carolina fan i'll run it for like 10 bucks but nobody said anything so i'm gonna put that in the booth for like 25 dollars because our booth is in columbia south carolina so the chances that somebody is in our antique mall sees that jersey is a men's extra large great size no name on the back so you can customize it if you want i think it would easily sell for 20 to 25 bucks in the booth much more easily than it would sell for that much on whatnot. One thing we may have to deal with at the booth that we've definitely never dealt with before is theft because our booth is in the back of the store. I don't think they have cameras back there. So someone could steal stuff from our booth, but we're not really putting anything super valuable in there, especially not anything tiny and valuable. So I don't think it'll be an issue, but the possibility is there. And that's honestly just part of running a retail business. Anybody that has a retail store has probably dealt with theft before. So I'm not really scared of it i guess it's just something you'll have to deal with if the time comes so here we have a screenshot from a website called consignable this is basically how the antique mall communicates with its vendors about what's selling so you can manage inventory and see what items are selling faster than others so you know what to restock your booth with in the future it has the date that it sold what the item was the sale price the commission and the net revenue if i've done the math correctly i think we've sold 26 or 27 items over the last two or three weeks since September 26, I guess. Um, we've made a total of $289.80 in net revenue. Obviously that doesn't include cost of goods, but a lot of this stuff is super cheap or stuff that we have just had sitting around forever. I think the most expensive thing was the guitar that sold on October 7th. I bought that for personal use at the flea market. I think I paid $25 for it and I played it a couple times. It was just sitting in the corner of the office. We took it to the booth just to try to get our money back. Uh, and I think it sold the next day. I think we dropped it off on the 6th and it sold on the 7th. 40 bucks, you know, made 36 after fees. So we still made a profit technically of $11, I guess. But it's really cool. I, I love having this. I love not having to go to the booth every day and just like manually check on things. We can just log on, see how it's doing and see what we need to bring to restock next time. Something else Haley and I realized the other day at the, at the antique mall is that a lot of the other vendors have names for their booth, like Meemaw's Attic or, you know, something like that. And I have no idea what we would name our booth if it should have a name at all. So drop a comment down below. Let us know, do you think it should have a name? Should we do anything? I thought about maybe putting something, telling people about our YouTube channel on there, because if they come to our booth and they don't know who we are, I think it'd be a good opportunity to get new subscribers to the channel. I feel like most people will be interested in that. So maybe we'll just put up something with like a QR code to the YouTube channel or something, but I don't know. Drop a comment down below and let me know. We are doing another Disney whatnot auction tomorrow, Friday, October, what's the date? October 13th, Friday, October 13th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're gonna have like, I don't know, like 60 to 80 different Disney items from our recent Disney haul. And we're gonna be giving away this Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition buyer giveaway. So that'll be really fun. If you guys wanna tune in for that, new users do get $15 off your first purchase. But I think that's gonna do it for today's 
video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do the best. We will catch you on the next one. If you missed the video a couple weeks ago where we bought all the Disney items from the guy in North Carolina, definitely click right here and check it out. It is the craziest buy you will ever see guaranteed.